Happy Saturday evening. I'm David. I'm the pastor of Douglasville and Union Chapel United Methodist Churches. This is my wife Mindy. She's the pastor of Chapelwood United Methodist Church. And uh, welcome once again to our Advent devotional. We're you know exploring the Jesse tree and the, the roots of Jesus. So we're going to uh, light our Advent candle and say our hymn of Welcome, Welcome, Emmanuel. Yeah, feel free to join us if you know it. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lowly exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. to thee, O Israel. Now our scripture passage for this evening is from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. That's kind of long, so just so, bear with us. But it needs to be because it's a complicated story. Yeah, it is. So Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. After these things, God to Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham shall be provided. The Lord himself shall provide the sacrifice. Um, now, just a quick historical contextual note, it was not uncommon back in those days for ancient peoples to in one sense or another sacrifice their firstborn to a higher power whether it be yeah to it's the penultimate offering of the first fruits or the best of the harvest is to offer your firstborn child and there are a lot of primitive cultures that did that as a matter of course um that was what was going to happen to your first child so we shouldn't think it was that unusual, I guess, that Abraham was called to do that. What probably would have been troubling to Abraham was not that he was being called to sacrifice his first son, as so many others had, but that God had promised that through this son, he would become the father of many nations, and here he was. A hundred years old plus. Yeah, not likely to bear any more sons, and um, being called to do that. But he went to the mountain, he prepared the sacrifice, he walked all the way to the place of sacrifice, believing that God had made a promise to him and that God would somehow fulfill that promise. Um, possibly even doing something miraculous, like a resurrection of something. He believed absolutely in the power of God to fulfill his promises, just as he had... had uh, he, I mean, Isaac was the child of Sarah, who was m way past the age of being able to have children. He was a miracle child anyway. So Abraham knew that God fulfilled his promises, even though to us they may seem absolutely impossible. Now, the uh, carrying forward that context into our, our Jesse Tree celebration, uh, we remember that the sacrifice was supposed to provide uh, 
reconciliation or redemption for the sacrificer, uh, that the gift was supposed to bring favor with God, and that the whole the sins of the whole world, there's no reconciliation and no sacrifice big enough to uh, to cover the sins of the whole world unless God Himself provides that sacrifice, which He does yes. through His Son Jesus. So that's where we carry forward this story through the Jesse tree and into the manger. Okay. So to symbolize that this evening, we have an ornament of a ram. Well, I'm just going to hang it up on here. You go ahead. I'm going to. And as we do that, we will uh, say together our Advent prayer. And uh, please feel free to join us in it if, you, uh, if you've if you been watching us and you know the prayer. It's the prayer we're praying every night. God, God of power, power and mercy, mercy open our hearts and welcome. Remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy so that we may share his wisdom and become one with him when he comes in glory. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We hope that you have a blessed day tomorrow. We hope that you will find a way to celebrate that second Sunday of Advent. Tomorrow we light the second candle and we celebrate the, uh, the week of hope. Uh, this was the week of faith, and we've talked a lot about people of faith this week. We've talked about people yeah. who said yes in faith to a lot of strange things that God was asking them to do. This is the week uh, uh, where we focus on hope. So uh, we, we hope that you will find a chance to worship and celebrate. And uh, you know, go to our YouTube channel if you can find it. The link is, should be in the, uh, in the comments up above there. Up above, yeah. <laughs> and... Um, uh, find some other content. We'll be posting uh, Advent drama, uh, the second installment of Samuel the Innkeeper, and uh, we'll both be doing messages at our churches, and we'll be posting those too. So we hope that you will join us. God bless you. God bless you.